Today we're going to be looking at whether the Mac can actually handle gaming at only 8GB of RAM. Yes, that's right. In the year 2024, Apple are still selling MacBook Airs and Pros with only 8GB of RAM as a base model. And if you wanted to upgrade to the more sensible 16GB, then you're going to have to pay a pretty penny for it. And for most simple Mac users, 8GB might be enough. However, if you're trying to run high-end games through the Apple Silicon Mac, then you might run into a few problems. That's because ever since the creation of the M1 chip, the CPU, I.O. and memory have all been integrated into a single SoC, in theory delivering lower latency and higher performance. However, the Mac has been sold with only 8GB of RAM for now three generations, then you might find that 8GB isn't quite cutting it. And that's because system memory is also used by the macOS operating system, as well as video memory as well. And as games become more complex and they use more resources, your 8GB of memory is inevitably going to be exceeded. And then your max memory pressure increases that's because every bit of data going over 8 gigabytes of memory overflows from the RAM chips into the solid state drive into something called swap. And as fast as the internal solid state drives on new Macs are, they are far, far slower than RAM. And then you'll see some hugely decreased performance, especially in gaming. So today what we're gonna be doing is comparing two identical MacBooks. So this is the MacBook Air M3. It has eight CPU cores and 10 GPU cores. The silver one on the left has only eight gigabytes of RAM and the midnight colored one on the right has 16 gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna be doing a variety of game tests, including native Mac OS titles, as well as Windows is gaming through translation layers as well and seeing whether 8 gigabytes of RAM is enough or whether you should definitely be upgrading to 16 gigabytes instead. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is Grid Legends. So this is a relatively recently released racing game that's been natively optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. If you look at the top right hand side at the Metal HUD frame rate counter you can see that the memory consumed is 7.3 gigabytes which is dangerously close to the 8 gigabyte limit on the machine on the left. However in this particular game the performance is basically neck and neck. There's barely any difference. And that's because the game's been optimized to work well even on base hardware. The game even runs nicely on the M1 chip with only 8GB of RAM. If we look at the average FPS, we're only looking at a difference of about three frames per second, which isn't too big of a difference. Next, we're looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So this is originally an Intel x86 64-bit game translated onto the Apple Silicon Mac using Rosetta 2. Here we're starting to see a much more substantial difference in frame rates between 8 and 16 gigabytes. The 16 gigabytes on the right is often 10 or 12 FPS faster than the 8 gigabyte machine. And this is despite the fact that we're using exactly the same CPU, GPU. The only real difference is the fact that we have different amounts of unified memory. And this is also confirmed in the results of the benchmark with the 16 gigabyte machine having a 10 frame rate lead, which is actually about 31%. Interestingly, the game is also less GPU bound on 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. And this is probably due to the fact that the 16 gigabytes has extra headroom allowing the game to reach some better performance and also means it's capable of better gaming settings as well. I'm going to tweak this up to medium at 1080p and allow the game's graphics to shine a lot better, a lot closer to how it was intended to look. Next we're going to be looking at Resident Evil 7. So this is a very recent release that's been optimized really well on Apple Silicon hardware and it's no wonder the frame rates are really good. The minimum specification for this is actually the M1 iPad which only has 8 gigabytes of memory as well but despite this we're actually seeing a pretty big increase in performance on the 16 gigabyte machine, something akin to about 25% increase in frame rates. Again, this is going to be thanks to the additional headroom that the extra RAM is going to be providing. But one thing that has surprised me is the fact that the frame rate has increased so much, despite the fact that only about 4.4 gigabytes of memory is being used by the computer. The next game that we're looking at is Baldur's Gate 3. So this is a pretty notorious game to get working on the Mac because 8 gigabytes of RAM might be enough for Act 1. But once you get to Act 3, it's not really going to be enough. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you today. So here, right off the bat on the Act 1 tutorial area, we're running the game at 1080p low with FSR set to balanced. So it's being upscaled here as well. The 8 gigabyte machine on the left is severely lagging behind 16 gigabytes on the right. We're looking at a pretty shocking difference in frame rate of about 70 to 90%. Within combat as well, we're looking at a big difference in performance, something closer to 60 to 70% in Act 1, but still extremely substantial. 
But really the biggest difference you're going to see is Act 3 of the game, which is a lot more performance demanding and it's going to bring your passively cool fanless MacBook Air to its knees. However, 16GB on the right is still showing a playable frame rate. That's to say in this situation, I think 30fps plus is still playable. However, the 8GB machine on the left is slowing to an absolute crawl and is very unresponsive to commands. Here as I'm walking through the city of Baldur's Gate, my 8GB machine can barely keep up at about 12, 11 FPS. Even just walking across the city is going to take longer compared to my 16 gig machine. And here I even have the headroom to be able to change the FSR setting up to quality mode, still hitting about that 25 to 30 FPS and making the game look a hell of a lot better. So lastly, we're going to be looking at Windows gaming on the Mac through translation layers. And the game here is Hitman 3, and this is the Windows game being run through Game 14 Toolkit 2 and crossover. And this is one of the biggest arguments for increasing the RAM on your Mac. I actually think that the base M3 is perfectly capable of translating this game onto Mac OS. However, due to the memory pressure, we're not able to get proper performance is actually stuttering for whole seconds at a time. Whereas the 16 gigabyte machine is quite playable. We did have to turn down the settings quite a lot from 1080p low down to FSR2 ultra performance mode, but it's really that 16 gigabytes of additional headroom, which is giving us the ability to play this on the Mac. Whereas on eight gigabytes, it's gonna stutter way too much. So now I hope this video decisively answers the question, should you be using eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM in order to game on your Mac? And whilst I would never suggest you should upgrade your Mac in order to get better gaming performance. You should definitely consider 16 gigabytes a minimum if you want to do any kind of high-end gaming on your Mac, whether it's native Mac OS titles or translating Windows games using crossover on Game Porting Toolkit 2. And anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.